Good afternoon. and let us know when we are live. Um, the Committee on House Administration will come to order. I'd like to acknowledge the members who are uh, present. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Uh, Butterfield, uh, Mr. Aguilar, Ms. Scanlon, Ms. Mr. Raskin, Mr. Loudermilk, um, Mr. Style, Mr. Davis, and Ms. Legere Fernandez. So all members of the uh, committee are present. Uh, as we begin, I want to note that we're holding this uh, business meeting in compliance with the regulations for remote committee proceedings pursuant to House Resolution 8. Generally, we ask members to keep their um, microphones muted when not speaking so we can limit the background noise and members will need to unmute themselves when seeking recognition or when recognized for their five minutes. Members, please keep your cameras on at all times, um, uh, even if you need to step away for a moment. Please do not leave the meeting or turn your camera off. And I'd also like to remind members that the regulations governing remote proceedings require that we are not permitted to participate in more than one committee uh, proceeding at the same time. At this time, I would ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and have any written statements be made part of the record. And without objection, that is so ordered. Um, under Article 1, Section 5, Clause 1 of the Constitution, each House of Congress shall be the judge of its own elections, returns, and qualifications of its members. Um, federal law and House rules give this committee, uh, the Committee of Jurisdiction, the House Administration Committee, um, uh, the responsibility to hear election contests on behalf of the House. By their very nature and under the requirements of the law, 
an election contest can only be filed by a candidate who claims a right to an office after an election official has declared the results of the election in favor of the contestant's opponent. Such challenges are not frequent, but they are regular and an expected part of our elections process. In fact, every two years, this committee works collaboratively on a bipartisan basis to send observers to districts where there is reason to believe the general election results may be particularly close or susceptible to challenge. For four, just four months ago in 2020, this committee sent 63 observers to 25 districts identified by both Democrats and Republicans to proactively monitor elections for which there was a reasonable basis to expect that a contest might be filed. Observing elections has a secondary benefit. It can inform Congress in its exercise of authority under Article I, Section 4 of the Constitution to, quote, at any time by law, make or alter such regulations, unquote, prescribed by states uh, regarding federal elections. Over the last 90 years, out of the hundreds of congressional elections that occur each cycle, candidates have filed just over two election contests in the House per Congress. Consistent with this, his, this historical pattern, in this Congress, two election contests have been properly filed under the Federal Contested Elections Act and are therefore within this committee's jurisdiction. Today, the Committee on House Administration will consider a resolution to postpone disposition of a motion to dismiss one of these two election contests, Hart versus Miller Meeks, a challenge that arises from Iowa's second congressional district. Uh, and rather than granting or denying contestee uh, Miller Meeks' motion to dismiss at this, at this time, I would recommend that we postpone the motion's disposition to give the uh, committee an opportunity to consider the merits of the case. Uh, last year's election in Iowa's second congressional district was one of the closest House elections in American history. According to the Iowa State Canvassing Board's final certification, the margin separating the two candidates was only six votes out of almost 400,000 ca cast, less than one-sixth of one percent. That's six votes, not 6,000, not 600, not 60, or even 16, just six. Fewer votes uh, than we have members of this committee. When the committee met on February 19th, the ranking member proclaimed, quote, we know every legal vote was counted in Iowa's second congressional district. However, the contestant, former Iowa State Senator Rita Hart, has raised specific, credible allegations that enough validly cast ballots were wrongly excluded from the certified totals to reverse the election's outcome. This includes two ballots cast during curbside voting that were mistakenly excluded from the count. It is the committee's constitutional duty to investigate all of these claims. It should not be surprising that any candidate in these circumstances with a margin this close would seek to exercise their rights under the law to contest the results. Over the past 90 years, there have been more than 21,000 congressional elections and more than 100 election contests in the House. And among all of those elections, this is the second closest result. What we are considering, to, considering today is a simple, narrow, procedural step. We are not prejudging this case. Rather, we are agreeing to judge it as the Constitution requires us to do. I would now be pleased to recognize the ranking member, Rodney Davis of Illinois, for uh, the purpose of his opening statement. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. Before I begin my remarks, I would like to note that this committee meeting was noticed late in violation of our rules. Uh, now, I know some issues are late breaking and might require adjustments, but the election contest before us was filed on December 22nd, making this meeting hardly late breaking. I would encourage my colleagues to provide the notice required by our rules so that members and our staffs may prepare adequately to serve the American people at these committee meetings. This committee should immediately move to grant Congresswoman Miller Meeks's motion to dismiss this election contest. Our committee should not be moving forward with overturning our colleagues' state certified election. She is a sitting member of Congress with all of the same rights and privileges as each and every one of us. Madam Chair, while I know we see the facts of this contest differently, 
I know we agree that any contest process should be bipartisan, open, and fair. As you are aware, both sides have expressed concerns with deficiencies in the FCEA in the past, including during the discovery process. I hope we will both commit to working together in all election contests to ensure a bipartisan, open, and fair process for the committee and the parties. As noted in her motion, Congresswoman Miller Meeks was certified the winner of Iowa's second district only after a thorough, transparent, and bipartisan process. Bipartisan recount boards, which included a member from each campaign and an agreed upon third party in all 24 counties went through and counted and recounted every lawful vote under Iowa law. Following this process, Iowa's bipartisan state canvassing board voted unanimously to certify Congresswoman Miller Meeks the winner. This is the process we can trust. In fact, we already have. At the same time Congresswoman Miller Meeks was sworn in, three other members from Iowa were also sworn in. By moving forward with Rita Hart's complaint, this committee is calling into question every member of Congress elected under Iowa law and frankly, each of us too. Rita Hart had an opportunity to challenge the claim she's making before the committee in Iowa's impartial court process. She chose not to. That leads me to believe her lawyers knew she could not win under Iowa law. Instead, she's choosing to pursue a partisan process in the House where Democrat members of Congress, not Iowa voters, will determine their representation in Congress. We've seen Democrats do this before, steal a House seat by changing the rules. In 1985, Democrats overturned a House seat by disregarding state law. Ballots that were not legal under state law were now suddenly determined legal votes under new rules invented by a partisan task force who completely rejected state law. This contest was dubbed the Bloody Eighth. This bitter fight dominated this committee for nearly five months and eroded public trust in their election process. We should learn from the mistake Democrats made 35 years ago, move to grant Congresswoman Miller makes his motion to dismiss. This would ensure that the votes of each and every Iowan who cast a valid ballot in this race will be counted. The public's distrust in our election process is already higher than it's been in a long time. The partisanship in this House is the highest it's been since I came to Congress, or frankly, since I was working as a staffer on day one in 1997. This committee is only contributing to this partisanship. The first action of this committee was to jam through a nearly 800-page election bill, which every Republican and one Democrat even voted against on the floor. Last week and this week, our set, that was last week, and then this week, our second action is to move forward with overturning the election of one of our Republican colleagues. In the meantime, this committee, which has oversight of the United States Capitol Police, the House Sergeant at Arms, the architect of the Capitol, and the Chief Administrative Officer, has not held a single hearing on the issues of January 6th and the vulnerabilities of our Capitol complex. We've had dedicated members of the National Guard here for months. We have not held a single hearing on the sustainability of having, having them here or what should come next. The House Sergeant at Arms and the U.S. Capitol Police have been without a permanent leader for months. We have not held a single hearing on how this is impacting security. General Honoré has released a report with many recommendations that I believe we can work together on. But instead of having a hearing on the general's report, we're having a meeting to move forward with overturning an election of one of our colleagues that was certified using a bipartisan and transparent process. The priorities of this committee are backwards. While running for election is a partisan issue in nature, administering and determining the outcome of elections should never be. It will be one of the greatest mistakes this House makes to take up an election contest where the candidate sidestepped the courts and instead turned to a partisan process in the House because they knew they could not win any other way. Hmm. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? I yield back. Without objection, other members may um, place their statements in the record. I will now call up resolution 117-12. Resolution 117-12 addresses contestee Marionette Miller Meeks January 21st, 2021 motion to dismiss the contested election case from Iowa that has been titled Hart versus Miller Meeks. 
Without objection, the resolution will be considered as read and open to amendment at any point. I now recognize myself for five minutes. Our only order of business today is adoption of resolution 117-12. A copy of the resolution has been made uh, available to each member. In her motion to uh, dismiss as well as her reply brief, contestee Miller Meeks <clears throat> argues that the contest should be dismissed because contestant Hart failed to exhaust, uh, exhaust state procedures, judicial procedures, before filing her notice of contest with the House. However, the House has never dismissed an FCEA contest solely because the contestant dec declined to file a state court case contesting the Campusing Board's final determination. To be sure, the House has required contestants to take full advantage of state law procedures before the election or before the state officially certifies a House election. Furthermore, the Federal Ele uh, Contested Election Act, or FCEA, the 1969 law that governs this case, lists four defenses that can justify dismissing a contest at this early stage. A contestant's failure to exhaust state court remedies is not one of those four defenses. Even if contestant Hart had filed a contested elections case in Iowa court, any ruling by that court would not have been binding on the House. As the Supreme Court has explained, the House and the House alone must, quote, independently evaluate, unquote, the election and reach an independent final judgment about its results. To further put the margin here in context, in that case, a Republican state a uh, Senate challenger brought suit and took the case all the way to the Supreme Court when he trailed the Democratic incumbent by more than 4,000 votes. The American people deserve to know who actually won this election. And the people of Iowa's second congressional district deserve to be represented by that person. I therefore plan and do plan to consult with a ranking member pursuant to the committee resolution that we unanimously adopted two weeks ago to send both parties a set of identical questions about the specific procedures, legal principles, and timelines that should control the course of this case. The questions and the parties' responses will be made public, and both parties' views will help inform how this committee can best render its, quote, independent final judgment, unquote, about which candidate won the election and is entitled to this House seat. Today, none of us can state with confidence who actually won this election. Answering that question is a solemn responsibility of this committee, and it is our obligation under federal law and under the Constitution. Our answer must be grounded in hard evidence, not bald assumptions. I therefore ask the members of this committee to vote for Committee Resolution 117-12 to postpone the disposition of the motion uh, to dismiss to allow the parties to respond to the questions that we have for them so that we can make a judgment on the merits. Uh, I would now recognize the ranking member for any statements he may wish or any amendment he may wish to offer. Ah, uh, you're clairvoyant, Madam Chair. I have an amendment at the desk. You're muted still. So I can take over? <laughs> the clerk will report the amendment. Amendment to committee resolution 117-12 offered by Mr. Prince of Illinois. I ask unanimous consent that further reading of the amendment be dispensed with. And uh, I would recognize Mr. Davis uh, for five minutes to explain his amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this election contest is a doggle for attorneys and nothing more. This, this, there are four sets of highly paid attorneys retained in handling this case. And the taxpayers are footing a huge bill because of it. We already know the outcome of this contest. Congresswoman Marionette Miller Meeks won a free and fair election. It's in the best interest of taxpayers and the integrity of our election process to dismiss this motion and to dismiss it today. My amendment would do just that. As I mentioned in my opening remarks, the outcome of this election was determined using a transparent and a bipartisan process. 
Every legal vote under Iowa has been counted and recounted by a bipartisan recount boards, by bipartisan recount boards in every county that make up this district. And after all that, Congresswoman Milton was determined the winner unanimously, unanimously by a, a bipartisan Iowa State canvassing board and seated by this house. She has a certificate of election from state officials. She's been doing a great job of representing the people of Iowa's second district. The people of Iowa elected her. And I urge this committee dis to dismiss this motion now so we're not wasting any more tax dollars on this contest and allow our colleague, Congresswoman Miller Makes, to continue to do her job on behalf of the people of Iowa. And I yield back. Gentlemen, yield back. Uh, I'll just say that I believe dismissal uh, today would be a dereliction of our duty under the Constitution and under federal law. Under Article I, Section 5 of the Constitution, each House shall be the judge of elections, returns, and qualifications of its own members, and accordingly we have a constitutional duty to ensure that the will of the people is reflected in the final composition of the House. Moreover, the Federal Contested Election Act places the burden of proof upon the contested to present sufficient evidence, even prior to the formal submission of testimony, to, quote, state with particularity the grounds upon which the contestant contests the election, and such grounds should be sufficient to change the results of the election, unquote. Here, Ms. Hart has met that threshold. In her notice of contest, Ms. Hart identifies 22 specific ballots that were erroneously excluded and the certified count that, if counted, would change the results of the election, and further alleges that the county recount boards failed to conduct a uniform district-wide hand recount. Collectively, these allegations warrant further investigation by the committee. I would add also that uh, Ms. Miller-Meeks, in answering uh, our uh, letter, may have additional issues that she wishes to raise before the committee. Uh, as Mr. Davis, I'm sure, will know, I have been involved in election uh, contests before. And as uh, a senior member of the uh, last serious uh, contest, um, I participated in making the motion that the uh, Republican incumbent whose election was being challenged uh, prevail in that contest. So I am certainly someone who has a record of calling them based on the facts. And that's what we're doing here, to find the facts, uh, to search for truth, and to act accordingly without partisan bias of any sort. We can't do that if we do not uh, allow for the evidence to be submitted. Dismissing prematurely today would prevent that, and I urge uh, that the amendment uh, be defeated. Are there further members who wish to be recognized on the amendment? I move to strike the last word. Mr. Stahl, you are recognized for five minutes. Thank you very much, Chairwoman. Um, I support the amendment to dismiss the contest against Congresswoman Miller Meeks. Uh, Congresswoman Miller Meeks was certified as Iowa's second district through a thorough, transparent, and bipartisan process. This includes going through the bipartisan recount boards in all 24 counties that make up the second district of Iowa. The recount boards is a reminder for everyone on today's uh, hearing here. It's made up of a member selected by Hart, a member selected by Ms. Miller Meeks, and two members selected by a third party. The, the people of Iowa have spoken that Congressman Miller Meeks has won the election. The majority of Iowa has fairly elected their representative. The Democratic majority in Washington should not stand in the way and delay this process any longer and spend taxpayer money on unnecessary legal fees. Rita Hart had the opportunity to challenge the claims she's making before the committee and before the committee in Iowa's impartial court process, but let's review, she chose not to. How do the people of Iowa feel about this? Let me read some of the points the Des Moines Register editorial board made on December 12th on December 12th, 2020, quote, in Iowa's second congressional district, Rita Hart has picked a path that will inflame. Her team skipped 
the appeals process available through Iowa's courts and elected to petition the U.S. House of Representatives panel who oversees a recount. And I'd like, uh, with unanimous consent, to insert this Des Moines Register editorial into the record. Without objection. So the question is then presented, why yeah. did Rita Hart make a challenge in D.C., but not Iowa? Might it be because this committee is made up of two-thirds Democrats and one-third Republicans? It does beg that question, something we have to consider as to why she chose to come here rather than to utilize all available avenues in Iowa. This committee should immediately remove, move to grant Congresswoman Miller Meek's motion to dismiss this election. While we're focused on this election, I'd note that this committee is not focused on some of the most important tasks before us. We were not allowed to have a markup of HR1. We had one brief, brief hearing on HR1, zero markups. We're not spending our time on even what the Democrats say is the top priority. HR1, their number one bill, HR1, we didn't even get a markup. My frustration on that has been properly noted, I hope. We haven't had a hearing on this committee on the security issues raised that are a serious concern in House administration. We haven't had a hearing on that. We're having a hearing on this where the, 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 the full review in Iowa has not even been chosen to be used. We're using this partisan process. To me, this committee's hearings are backwards. We should prioritize on what's important to us. Things like getting our kids back to school and getting people back to work and this committee actually being allowed to have a markup on HR1, reviewing our security. Our, our, our priorities, I think, are backwards. I support this amendment and I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Do other members wish to be heard on the amendment? Seeing no one then, uh, the vote will be on the amendment offered by Mr. Davis. All in favor of the amendment, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those who are opposed, please say no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it, and the amendment is not adopted. Madam Chair. Yes, Can Mr. I Davis. Ask for a recorded vote, please. A recorded vote has been requested, and the clerk will please call the roll. Ms. Lofgren. No. Ms. Lofgren votes no. Mr. Raskin. No. Mr. Raskin votes no. Mr. Butterfield. Butterfield votes no. Mr. Butterfield votes no. Mr. Aguilar. No. Mr. Aguilar votes no. Ms. Scanlon. No. Ms. Scanlon votes no. Ms. Ledger Fernandez. Okay. No. Ms. Ledger Fernandez votes no. Mr. Davis. This recorded vote is exactly why you don't need an, an official election search for the state of Iowa overturned. By a Point, of order. The Point, of order. Point of order, Madam Chair. How does the gentleman wish to vote? Y yes. Mr. Davis. Clerk, you're muted. Please unmute. Mr. Davis votes aye. Mr. Loudermilk. From Washington, D.C., Loudermilk votes aye. Mr. Loudermilk votes aye. Mr. Style. Style votes aye. Style votes aye. Clerk will report. Madam Chairperson, we have no three ayes. And the amendment is not adopted. Unless there are further amendments, I will now call up uh, the resolution for uh, a uh, vote um, for the reading has been dispensed with. All those in favor of the uh, resolution will indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed will say no. 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 Is there a request for recorded vote, Mr. Davis? Aye. All right. The clerk will call the roll, please. Ms. Lofgren. Aye. Ms. Lofgren votes aye. Mr. Raskin. Aye. Mr. Raskin votes aye. Mr. Butterfield. Aye. Mr. Butterfield votes aye. Mr. Aguilar. Aye. Mr. Aguilar votes aye. Ms. Scanlon. Aye. Ms. Scanlon votes aye. Ms. Ledger Fernandez. Aye. Ledger Fernandez votes aye. 
Mr. Davis. And, and Mr. Clerk, I, I apologize. I, I must have gone out on me, my signal. How was Mr. Aguilar recorded? Mr. Aguilar voted aye. Oh, okay. I was just checking. Um, I, I'm a no. Mr. Davis? Mr. Lowermilk? No. no. Mr. Lowermilk votes no. Mr. Style? Style votes no. Mr. Style votes no. Clerk will report. Madam Chairperson, we have six ayes and three noes. And the uh, resolution is agreed to. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Parliamentary yes. inquiry. Yes, sir. Is is six votes sufficient to, to pass this in this committee? Yes. This concludes the business before the committee today. Without objection, staff is authorized to make any necessary technical and conforming changes. I'd like to thank all the members for their participation. I look forward to working with you to accomplish our vital work on this election contest. I can guarantee you that it will be transparent, uh, open, and fair. With that, uh, this meeting of the Committee on House Administration is adjourned. <laughs>